welcome again to our science lesson, which we will learn on interdependence. Previously, we talked about the components of the environment, and we had the living and the non-living components of the environment, if you can remember. The living comprised of the plants and animals, and then the non-living was water, soil, and air. And so today, we will learn about interdependence. And what is interdependence? What is interdependence? And we'll say that interdependence is a situation whereby is a situation whereby living things depend on each other. It's a situation whereby living things depend on each other. So, as we have said and written here, that interdependence is the situation whereby living things depend on each other, we will again learn and try and understand that these living things depend on each other in different ways. We have the plants and animals depending on each other, plants depending on animals and animals depending on plants. We also have plants depending on plants themselves. We call them interdependence between plants. And we also have animals depending on other animals. But we are going to learn of the two. Plants depending on plants, interdependence between, between plants, and interdependence uh, between plants and animals. So let's start. Interdependence between plants. interdependence between plants and plants depend on each other in three ways plants depend on each other in three ways we have these three points plants depend on each other for support plants depend on each other for support plants depend on each other for shade plants depend on each other for shade and also we have plants depend on each other for habitat. Plants depend on each other for habitat. So this is how plants depend on each other. And uh, we are going to discuss each one of them. For example, when we talk of support, when we talk of support, we will talk about some plants having very weak st stems. Some plants do, uh, do have very weak stems and these plants depend for, on other plants for support. And let me give you just an example of this plant. At some point you'll find a plant, yes, And some plants doing that and uh, this is one of the strong plants and this is the plant that depends on the other plant for support these plants are known as twining plants they twine around other plants and they do this for them to get sunlight you understand that plants make their own food in the process of photosynthesis whereby they need sunlight and so these weak stem plants try to twine around the stems of other plants for them to get the sunlight. Some of them have some structures. Some of them have some structures. You find them having some hooks. You find them having some, some hooks. You find them having some hooks and these hooks help them to support themselves because they have a weak stem and they also help them to go up high 
to get the same sunlight. Some of them have structures known as tendrils. Some of them have some structures known as tendrils. So for support, these are plants with weak stems. These are plants with weak stems. They have special structures. They have special structures which help them uh, go high to get sunlight. These structures are We have hooks. These structures are. We are moving on. Some have hooks. Yes, some have tendrils. And some climb by twining or twining. They twine by twining. So, all these plants that depend on other plants for support. Some are hooked, some are turned in, some turn around these plants for them to get up high for sunlight. Let's talk about shade. Let's talk about shade. We find that some plants grow under the shade of bigger plants. Uh, these are plants like uh, most plants. They grow under the shades of other big plants. This is because the shade uh, maintains or provides for the most ground for these plants to grow. Or uh, they make them wet all the time and uh, that is a good environment for these plants to Let's call it a 
day. Have a good time. Thank you.